Hi, welcome back. I'm Abel Zill. I'm the founder of Zill Vardos. I'm a tiny house builder based in Olympia, Washington. I'm currently working on my 24th tiny house. I work with a crew of four to six carpenters and mechanical geniuses in my workshop. The tiny houses I build start typically as a sketch. When I kind of feel happy with the balance of the form and the design, I take it to the 3D model stage. Then I bring in my other designer friend Carpenter. He works with me to get all the parts and pieces made in the 3D world and fit together so that we have a working model. From that point on, it's just a matter of organizing the project, tasking small, like two person crews onto the various parts, like framing the walls, building the roof structure, creating the windows, and hanging them properly in the house. I often build the utility systems myself. Then the house goes on to this really wonderful finishery stage, which is long-winded, but really fun because that's where we bring in the woods that we've been curating and we create trims and curved pieces that go around the windows. We install cabinetry and flooring and tiles. Then when the house is really close to completion, there is this testing and kind of checkoff phase that is something I've gotten a lot better at as I've gained experience. That's where I get to like hone how everything functions together. I, I really enjoy that part of the building process. This is the Damselfly house. It's got a 10 foot by 24 foot floor plan, so it's pretty big. One of my favorite parts about this exterior is the entry door. This is Zill plank door, which is kind of a very heavy laminated buildup a marine plywood and then uh, wood planks. It has a damselfly wing inlay of contrasting wood. It turned out so beautiful. That ties into the roof line of the house, which is kind of unique. I've been wanting to do a double curved roof line for a while, which is where it curves upward and then downward again, or concave convex. I used the Anduvia roof again, and it handles curves, which is kind of where it's at for roofing for me. The Damselfly house has a lot of windows, which is what makes it so bright and airy inside. And as per usual, we hand built all of them in the Zill workshop. And this uh, feature is one that I kind of insisted to do, despite the fact that there was barely enough budget for it, <laughs> but that I wanted to build a window box in the kitchen. Welcome to the interior of the Damselfly House. Damsfly is a pretty good sized bathroom because it's a 10 foot wide floor plan. You enter the bathroom through this um, shoji door that I hand built. It has an acrylic um, diffused filler, so it'll last a lot longer than like shoji paper. Right above the bathroom is a not large sleeping loft. Uh, it could also be a small space for a desk. Um, it has pretty good headroom up there. Well, I designed these stairs new for this house. I incorporated storage in the stairs. And the rest of the steps are drawers. And behind this lower set of steps, uh, which is removable, is the hot water heater. And then there's the kitchen. Of course, we built the cabinetry ourselves in the shop. Uh, then going over from the kitchen, there's a flat screen television which is on a like articulated bracket, so you can either move it kind of out of the way if you don't want it in the kitchen area, or you can aim it at the bed or the couch. There's a 
bed platform in this end, so you can sleep on the main floor without having to climb stairs or a ladder. There's some of my, and uh, there's storage underneath the bed. Small couch and a side table. You could also put a dining table and a couple chairs in here if you wanted, or you could put pop-up tables and eat from the couch if that's your jam. Um, but I, I think this is a, a flexible space. You could, you could do whatever you want with it. I think the 10 foot width is what makes it feel more open than usual. But also we've been designing to keep the floor low and the top of the peak high. So there's a lot of vertical space in here. It's really tricky but fun to try to transcend the, the box limitations of a tiny house that's meant to move on wheels. So by adding dimensionality to it, you open up the space more than usual. I've been building small living spaces for 10 years now. And I think one of the most important things I've learned about building them is it's important to find the right people to work with. That makes all the difference. It's, it's really difficult to find good people to have in your crew, but it's also like one of the most rewarding things when you have a great crew. Over the 10 years I've been building, one of the most important features that a small space can have seems to be flexibility. Like some space that's not built out or designated for one particular thing. It seems like people enjoy their spaces the most when they can kind of reconfigure it from time to time. I think the best advice I've been given in my time building, which has been almost 25 years, is to not sweat the small stuff, uh, to work hard, because really, to build, you kind of have to put your nose to the grindstone and keep it there for a, a much longer time than some people are comfortable. If you take that original like florid pipe dream of an idea you had for a project, whatever it is, and cut it in half, you'll end up with something that's much more manageable. And that's especially true if you haven't built something like that before or you don't have the experience to approach a project like that. Keep your dreams, keep your huge idea, but build it in small increments and don't get yourself into too much debt. That'll give you the freedom to do what you want and go the directions you need to to make a living doing what you love. If you want to see more of the projects that I built, there are images of them up on my website. There are also video tours up on my YouTube channel. If you're interested in booking me for a tiny house build, you can find information about that on the website as well. Thanks for visiting my workshop, and uh, we'll see you around.